All right. Well, let's get started. And uh, welcome everyone out there in Minderland, Minder Watercolor Land, and also uh, Greenville Center for Creative Arts. Uh, they're actually the ones that have initiated this demo. So I'm doing this. Uh, I got a class, hopefully, coming up in June if uh, everything goes as planned. And uh, uh, the Greenville Center of Creative Arts uh, is where that class will be for those of you who are wondering. And that will be, I don't remember the exact date, but you can probably check on their website. And uh, this is a concept that in that class basically something that we talk about in practice and it's also a very frequently asked question about painting trees so that's what I want to cover today and we're going to do this little brief demo and cover some points uh, some pointers that you can think about when you look at trees and when you paint trees okay um, First off, uh, the, th the comment I get most often uh, about trees is how chaotic and complex, and really landscape in general, how do I simplify, how do I simplify, how do I simplify, how do I look at it? And if you look at, let's go to my artboard, if you look at this photo, it's a good example of how chaotic trees can be. I mean, it's just uh, a mess. and so the typical way that artists handle trees uh, most often beginners although a lot of different levels will do it this way is to come in and stipple okay I see a lot of leaves so I'm gonna paint a lot of leaves now you can paint a tree successfully that way I'm not saying that you can't uh, I've done it many times but you're sort of leaving out some important concepts and you're also denying yourself the opportunity to simplify and make the tree look fresh and unified. Um, what I'm going to suggest is that this kind of a technique, and some people will do it with sponges or rags or all kind of things, um, and it's fine as far as it goes, but what I'm going to suggest to you is you hold off on this till the end. To the end until you have kind of gotten the idea of a tree structure and a value structure and how to simplify it and here's the pointers for doing that first of all um, make sure that you're looking at the overall shape and structure of a tree that's first um, they can be uh, in several different forms let me show you this this is an example. This is something good and important to study. Uh, usually a tree will follow a particular shape, overall shape and structure. It's the branch patterns that do that. And even if they're bare, you'll see some of these same structures. Now it's true, there are re irregular uh, trees and structures, you know, ones where limbs have fallen out or been pruned or cut out. But even so, at least a part of the, the tree will follow these structures. So that's the first tip, is be aware of uh, overall structures. And you don't have to draw these, you know, when you're painting a tree, but you're, you're mindful of them. So within a branch structure like that, uh, or an overall shape structure while it may be irregular in some ways it's generally it's going to fit a pattern that's helpful uh, to know um, even in a tree line you can usually pick out these shapes uh, especially if you're doing distant trees you're going to be more in tune or need to be more in tune to this kind of uh, study of a tree structure okay and as I mentioned um, even some irregular shaped trees can still kind of sort of fit that pattern
or that sh overall shape. So the best way uh, to study overall tree shapes is just to study them. Uh, go out and make a study, uh, take pictures, forget about all the detail, and look at the different shapes trees make. You will be able to pick them out even in a tree line. Even though you may not see the entire shape of a tree, you will see parts and pieces of it. You know, it may, may be more of a pointed uh, kind of a shape, maybe more of a mushroom overall shape, maybe more of a tall slender shape. Just be aware of them. Study them. The second thing is that these always break down into their own shapes. So again, we're talking about shapes that are not individual leaves. We're talking about clumps. Foliage clumps together. And I think probably one of the best analogies I can think of is a cloud. Um, a bough, let's, let's say we're looking at a bough of uh, foliage on a tree, could be simplified to look like a cloud. Okay? And you look for the shapes. Now I'm sort of uh, rendering the foreground shapes. So we'll get to depth in a minute. But be aware that, that these boughs um, and foliage clump together in bigger shapes. Even though you're seeing all of this leaf detail. And I'll tell you one of the best ways, or one of the most foolproof ways that artists have used for decades is squinting. If you squint you'll start to merge those values. Um, once you start to identify those bow and foliage shapes, larger broad cloud-like shapes, um, you can start to think in terms of dimension. A cloud, you look at a cloud, it's got dimension. I mean it's it's round. It's it, if you could grab a hold of a cloud, kind of like cotton candy, you could turn it around and see it in space. You would see if there were light coming from the top that it has shadow. And so a clump of foliage will be like that, like a, like a cloud. Um, most of the shadows outdoors sink to the bottom. So you're wanting to think of these, these boughs in terms of three-dimensional round shapes not a flat cutout that's a big concept because I see a lot of boughs that look like entries that look like flat cutouts most light in landscape comes from the top or from the top side so most of the shadows sink to the underneath side and so as you identify you know the bow structures and they start to merge together just the same way that clouds do uh, you can kind of come under some of those those shapes that you see with shadow you can also uh, go in depending on how uh, proficient you are with the watercolor medium and lift on top of those shapes that's in watercolor, in transparent watercolor, that's the equivalent of painting in white. And so now these bow structures start to take on some dimension. Okay? So break down, uh, look at the overall shapes to recap, then start to break down the internal shapes into. Uh, I'll call them bow clouds, or foliage clouds. And it's funny because uh, particular uh, breeds or, or species of trees will have different shapes. Uh, I see, especially in hardwoods, here in South Carolina we have a lot of hardwoods and pines too, but 
a lot of uh, bow foliage clouds, if you will, uh, look like a series of umbrellas. They're clouds, but they're almost umbrella-like. But they're then fitting into these larger shape structures. Okay? So you're combining chaotic bits of leaves into a cloud that starts to make sense dimensionally. This is so, so important to give your trees, uh, you know, presuming you're wanting to paint in a realistic fashion uh, dimension. It looks like it's in 3D space. So here's my sort of umbrella-like clouds. We'll just sketch in some ground here real quick. And now with these little umbrella shapes, uh, we're going to kind of touch bits in the bottom. Don't just make your shadowing along the edge or it'll look like a cutout. Uh, remember there are clouds within clouds of these. But they're round cloud pillow like shapes. Okay? And they have dimension and depth. And we're not getting to this yet. So very important because if you go straight to this uh, and you're not familiar with these concepts uh, you're going to miss getting that dimension in your trees and you're going to miss getting some fresh simplification into your uh, painting. Now, um, the other concept, and it kind of goes along with these cloud shapes, is when you simplify, you're joining areas of similar value. Now, if you don't know what I mean by value, value is just how light or dark something is. Okay. Every painting and even every object like a tree within a painting will have a range of value. From light to dark. Generally, and I do mean generally, you can break uh, trees down into three main areas of value. In reality, there's sort of infinite scale, but um, you know, maybe four, maybe very, very light for the, the hottest highlights. No more than five usually. So you're thinking in terms of, of combining value. Now, when you think about value, you're no longer thinking about the shape of the tree. They go hand in hand, okay? So I don't want to divorce one from the other, but uh, you're thinking about the shape of value. What you know by that I mean a shadow has a shape. Look at this tree and you can see a deep shadow in here that has nothing to do with the shape of a tree. It's just it's just where there is little or no light or a lot less light. Um, now some of these highlights have to do with the shape of the bow but overall you're looking at the shape of the value of that light area. Okay? So I, I guess what I'm getting at is you start joining those areas. Um, since watercolor is a, a light to dark medium, uh, it's easiest to think of joining each uh, layer of darker value. So as I go in and, and maybe more darkly shadow this tree, I'm joining the areas that all have that same value. 
and I did that in sort of this uh, dark middle value. Now I'm coming in with a darker shadow. So overall, to recap, trees have a shape. That's important in Simplify. The bow and foliage structure, as it clumps into clouds, it has a shape. And then as each of those shapes uh, break into light and dark, the values themselves have a shape. And when the values shapes are studied, they tend to join together. I want to do this again a little bigger so we're going to start really light this time we're going to increase the value and so I'm going to start painting these these tree clumps in uh, this sort of umbrella like shapes that's probably the most obvious you'll see all kinds of shapes uh, with foliage clumps you'll see fingers you'll see uh, long sort of shapes but almost all of them go in these arcs again though you really need to to study them but pine trees and fir trees are a little different they say well they will have some of those but they will be flatter so notice how uh, I've got an overall tree shape but I also have some individual bow clouds foliage clouds and shape but this is my lightest value and it's all joined uh, it's joined because it's the same value and you can do that now there are several ways to add deeper value you can charge in charging if you're not familiar with the watercolor term is just uh, a little wet and wet dab of deeper pigment and uh, when you dab it in it sort of spreads so you can you can shadow that way you can wait till it dries and come back with more hard edge shading kind of like you see here and here uh, I like to get some shading in with charging while uh, a tree is wet or while the, the paint is wet and depending on where your lights coming from it could be more to one side or another but again the shadows tend to sink to the bottom on boughs on trees so this is going to disperse and down here the wet's already dried so it's uh, not really dispersing wet but uh, as this dries it's going to be more of a middle value continue to deepen and in, in this short demo I don't really have time to let this dry or I would show you probably you know more of how you could do it dry well this is pretty dry up here so it's just a matter of you know painting more of a hard edge shape dry so it, it's really however whatever style of shadowing you want to use. You can also paint a shape and blend out or soften off the edge. If you want to blend it more, you don't have to blend it. That's really a style thing. Point is, is that uh, you're coming in with uh, shadows underneath these cloud-like structures and you're joining them now I'm going to go ahead and let that dry some um, let's go ahead and get a trunk in there The 
just to plant it a little bit. So we're talking about the same thing. And you can watch, you know, you can watch as the the paint dries and uh, go back in and refine. I'm, I'm using mainly azo green, phthalo green, uh, some neutral tint, and some Payne's gray. Really, I don't want you focusing on color though. This is a value and structure demo. And you could paint this with purple for all I care. Uh, and the result would be the same. You'd have a pretty convincing looking tree. But notice again how these look like clouds. Now, um, and final point, final tip. Trees overall have depth. While I mentioned the cloud, and uh, again, picture holding the cloud in your hand like a piece of cotton candy. Think of the whole tree as being a three-dimensional object. So you're going to be able to, if you were a bird, you'd be able to travel through that tree, go in one side, go out the other, and it wouldn't be flat. It would have volume. And the way that translates into light and dark is that you have foliage on the back side and inside the tree that is dark. So you can actually fill in some of these negative spaces. It's the way I like to do it with some of your deepest values. And this is like the foliage inside the foliage. And in, some, in a lot of cases this will really make your tree look like it's standing in 3D space. You may even have a bough coming down the back side. Again, this is still wet in places so it's still bleeding. But I think I think the effect is still there. And so you can leave some sky holes if you want, but you can fill in or just add them negatively uh, in certain areas. So I think I'm going to go in here. This is still wet and just with some water to soften off soften up some of these edges here just clouds like painting clouds that all fit into an overall tree structure all right okay uh, we're just about to the end of my time so uh, here's the final point and now we come to this now you could stop right here, and a lot of artists do, a lot of watercolorists do, I do all the time. But if you have a special tree or one that's bigger in your scene and you really want to detail it, you just thought, you're just in that mood, okay? You just, I want to detail, detail, detail. Um, here's the way to do it. Keep your detail to the contrast edges. So what do I mean by that? I mean, there is contrast. Uh, here's dark and here's light. Here's dark, here's sort of a middle dark, and here's light. So um, I'm going to go in here. I actually don't stipple, I just kind of place. Your eye picks up detail on edges, um, most detail. When you look at a tree, or when you look at um, a bunch of foliage or tree line or whatever your eye picks up detail on edges and edges are where there's contrast if there's not much contrast uh, you don't really have an edge and it's funny this is is almost one of the closest things I think of to watercolor magic but if I add just a few little pops of detail near these contrast edges. Look how all of a sudden the tree looks like you spent hours 
detailing. You can take the light colors. If you don't have a dark background behind that tree, you can do the same thing out here. Basically, these, these lovely little uh, areas where value has run together, largely leave that alone, but put your detail near the edges of them. I have a few hanging down. This works on just about any kind of brush too. It actually even works on texture that has nothing to do with trees or foliage. Now I've dotted in just very few bits uh, of foliage and detail foliage. I sometimes get criticized for saying foliage. <laughs> and it looks like I spent an hour doing this kind of a thing. But what I have done is I've constructed a tree in dimensional space that, that has volume and form. And then I've given it some suggested detail. This is what's meant when artists talk about suggested detail. And usually it's just detail added in just a few places, not everywhere, that makes it look, your, your eye just sort of fills in the idea uh, throughout the rest of it, that it's a very detailed tree. All right, everybody, I hope that was useful. Uh, I know for some of you that watch my YouTube channel, that was probably a recap. But it's a useful recap, even for me. I, I go through this exercise all the time. I hope that was helpful. And for my viewers, we'll see you on YouTube. Uh, for those of you at the GCCA, I hope to see you in my class. Bye-bye, everybody.